years ago, Mercedes-Benz had an idea. It wanted to build a vehicle that could cover 1,000 kilometers or roughly 621 miles in a single charge. Now, there were rules to this plan. It couldn't have a massive battery and it couldn't do things like cover up the wheels, which you see on a lot of other fishing cars like the Honda Insight. And so what did it do? Well, it built this, the EQXX. I'm here in Nice, France, after this vehicle just completed its inaugural drive. Now, it didn't just complete the 1,000 kilometers when it got here, it did 1,008, and when they parked it, it still had charge left on the battery. It could have gone about another 140 kilometers. The design drag coefficient of 0.17 is helped by the active aerodynamics. Initially, the idea was to get to 0.19, but Mercedes was able to do better. One of the rules was that they couldn't cover up the rear wheel. Now, if you look on a lot of older efficient vehicles like the Honda Insight, if you cover up this wheel, you have this nice aerodynamic air curtain that just sort of glides over the side of the vehicle. Mercedes was like, no, you can't do that. Instead, what they did is they moved the wheels out so they're closer to the actual body of the vehicle and they made these special wheel covers that actually pretty much do what that sort of spat would have done. So I'm in the vehicle. I'm the first non-Mercedes-Benz employee in this vehicle ever. <laughs> and this is, it's, it's actually really nice. The, the the giant screen that they have, it goes from pillar to pillar. It is it is working. It is showing me uh, the, the the route in a very glorious way. It's it's comfortable. It's, yeah, if, uh, if this was uh, available for purchase and I were, I don't know, not a journalist, if I were rich, I could probably <laughs> buy this car. <laughs> I love it, yeah. And you know what, we, we built an efficient car and we improved it and if you check that out. Oh yeah, it still has that EV torque that everyone loves. There's headroom for tall people and the, the drive that you completed on, uh, you started on April, well started and finished on April 5th, that was the first time on, on regular public roads? That was the absolute first time on regular public roads, yeah. I mean, that was <laughs> bold, wasn't it? You announced the vehicle January 3rd uh, at the sort of <laughs> a hybrid CES and then said in April or later this year, <laughs> we will be driving this on public roads yeah. to, to hit this 10, you know, a, a thousand kilometers from a single battery pack that's of, of slightly less than 100 kilowatt hours. And then, okay, we're gonna do it, but we haven't actually tested it on public roads yet. <laughs> yeah, we started proving around testing in January. So at the very beginning, the first measurements, we were like, oh yeah, well, that's gonna be a close one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like, really, we were like, oh, wow, okay. We told the world right now. So um, yeah, we have to work really, really, really hard to accomplish that goal. Yeah. The plan was to build a vehicle with an efficiency that used 10 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers or 6.2 miles per kilowatt hour. On the drive though, they clocked 8.7 kilowatt hours used per 100 kilometers, which means that the car is far more efficient than they anticipated. There's all this extra pressure in order to make this vehicle hit that, that target of yeah. 10, what is it, uh, 10 miles, uh, I'm sorry, 10 kilometers Per, 10 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer. Yeah. And we wanted to get below that. That was a big goal. And we achieved 8.7 on real road for those 1,000 kilometers. 10, 10 kilometers. More than six miles per kilowatt hour. Yeah. I no, it's better. It's more though, because you still more. had 140 kilometers essentially left yes. in, in the tank. Yeah, yeah. It's a 900 volt system with nearly 100 kilowatt hours of battery capacity, but that pack has 50% less volume and is 30% lighter than what you see in the EQS. Mercedes did this by replacing the individual modules and creating one large single pack. All the data, the thousand kilometers, the below 10 kilowatt hours and everything, this was uh, based on um, test bed, test rig tests. This was based on um, digital development and uh, then we told the world hey we have this car we developed this car and then we went road testing <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah you can imagine the tension of the team and um, also the excitement mm -hmm. when you do the, the the first meters with the car and you realize 
Yes, <laughs> it's going to work it's out. Working. It's going to work out. I mean, first, then, well, to be honest, the first week, there were some doubts. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know what was really astonishing while road testing? What do you think? I'm, I'm not accelerating yeah, now. The car is just rolling. We're just rolling. Rolling free. Uh, check out, I can, so the rolling I can put just, it to neutral. To, I put it to neutral right now. This we're is, still doing about 50-ish. We're barely, we're losing a little bit of, of speed, but not really. Mercedes had specially built roll resistance tires and lightweight magnesium wheels. The tires are specially built and have a special shape that fits nicely with the wheels that are extremely flat to reduce air turbulence, which is important because the front wheel housing creates one third of the total drag on the vehicle. Here you go. So there here you have your diffuser. That's uh, one aerodynamic piece that's helping us to achieve this awesome drag coefficient. So now the diffuser is out because we are uh, on a highway. Um, the diffuser goes back in when we um, coast down and go to lower speeds because we want to protect it. We don't want to uh, have someone stepping on our diffuser. So we're, we're rolling, we're still doing, uh, actually going more than 60, we're, we're speeding up. We're rolling, we're speeding. We do a, a slight incline, but it's not a lot. Uh, but the rolling resistance, again, in the aerodynamics on this vehicle. And it's, it's interesting because there are a lot of sensors on this vehicle, including ones for air pressure, so it can actually measure tailwind and how that affects the uh, the energy and how it affects the efficiency and of course headwind. We got 0.1 kilowatt hours of, of, of energy. Back just to, by the tailwind. Just, just from tailwind. So we, yeah. we've, and then the air and then rolling resistance. And. The sunroof increases the range by 2% or 25 kilometers, but mostly it's used to run the in-car tech. And uh, I did not touch the brake once, by the way. Oh, so this is all recuperative. Yeah. It's all uh, one pedal drive. One pedal driving. Yeah. You see? Look this was one. I just added. Boom. So the whole, the entire drive we haven't you haven't used the brake. No. One of the things they wanted to do when they were building this vehicle is to make sure there was no resistance from the brake, the physical brakes, the friction brakes, the pad against the rotor. So while we're rolling down this hill, we're just collecting more and more uh, electricity back into the battery, and none of that is lost because the pad is slightly wearing against the, the rotor, which you typically have in a regular car because you want that instant pressure when you hit that brake. And this, they made, they they worked on a braking system that doesn't have to rely on that. So tell me how heartbreaking it was to put uh, side mirrors on, because if you have a vehicle and you have side mirrors, side mirrors are horrible for aerodynamics. Yes, they are, but those are specially designed. While side cameras look cooler than side mirrors, Mercedes determined that the energy usage and the fact that the mirrors required a person to refocus their eyes wasn't worth the effort. Plus, the drag of the mirror they built for the vehicle is 0.003, while the camera would have been 0.002. So at the end, there really wasn't that big of a difference. If, if you've seen in, in Europe, uh, you can have side mirrors that are cameras. So the Honda e has that, uh, Audi has that. Um, and the reason they're doing that with the electric vehicles is that side mirrors are just, they're, they're just drags. They just drag down your drag coefficient to make car less efficient, but US regulations don't allow that. So we're still gonna get side mirrors at least for a while. We'll see what happens in a few years with NHTSA. Maybe they'll make that change in the, uh, in the name of efficiency. But for now, we still have side mirrors. Like hitting anything else. There we go, I didn't break the car. So what's next for the EQXX? Well, the technology that they put in the vehicle over two years, expect to see it rolling out into series vehicles over the next couple years. For more automotive coverage from the south of France, be sure to subscribe to Wingadget.